Brother Jerry, where are you? Hey! Hey! Hi, everybody! You came back! I'm going to take my mask off, okay? But remember, you got to keep yours on, and we're going to be socially distanced, but you'll hear me better. So here it comes, and here I am. And I'm in Contoquoc, New Hampshire, with Tom Biggis and his wife, Diane. We took a drive up here today because we are at the Marklin Candle Company. And we're here to pick up our Easter candle, our Paschal candle. And that is given to us in memory of Robert Timbrell from Bob and Doris Vote. So we're here to pick it up, and we can't wait to light it at the Easter vigil at our church. So we're going to get a little information about how the candle is kind of made and decorated and uh, all the things that it means has wonderful symbol, okay? But before we, we get inside, on this beautiful sunny day here in New Hampshire, we should do our prayer, okay? Because we always start off with a song. And we're going to put somebody in our hands today. We're going to put Robert in our hands today because Robert is gone to God, but his memory lives on in this candle that's going to be lit at the Easter Vigil. And we're also going to put Rita, Rita Harris, one of our good parishioners who's at Albany Med and having a real struggle right now. So we're going to pray for her. Okay, so we're going to pray for Robert and, and uh, Rita. So, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got Rita and Robert. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. So, welcome to the Markland Candle Company. We're going to meet Martin. Uh, Mark, Martin Marklin, it's hard to say, Martin Marklin, and he is the owner, and he's going to be with us and kind of explain a lot of wonderful things. It's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful place, so let's go in. You ready, Tom? Yes. Okay. So here we are, it's just beautiful in here, it's a terrific guest uh, place gift shop yep and i love shopping so i'm going to be shopping afterwards so martin how are you <laughs> hi father good, Jerry. See good seeing you this is martin and he's the owner and the designer and he's going to take us through today and we're going to learn a lot of things things that you probably never thought of when you see our big candle burning in church so martin we are just Delighted to be with well, you. Well, welcome, welcome, Thank and thanks you for uh, gracing our uh, space today. Wow. And so, why don't we're going to go through a little dark hallway, and we're going to open up into the candle making area, where we're going to show you the Paschal candle, right? And talk a little bit about the theology of light, mm -hmm. why we have Paschal candles, and why the bee is ah. so critical to the Paschal candle. So right. This is the story about the bee. So come okay. on back. It's going to go dark for a while, but then we're yep. going to resurrect in the light that's right we're going to remember like the easter vigil starts in the dark and so we're going to go into the dark right now all set it's awfully dark here it is so um <clears throat> father jerry so this might be a good time to start our, our conversation about the Paschal candle. Uh -huh. And um, so as you know, and as your parishioners know, we gather outside at the Easter Vigil for the Paschal, great Paschal celebration. And we gather at night and we gather around a fire. Right. And from that fire, which is blessed, we light a candle. Mm -hmm. And that candle begins our our triumphant celebration of the overcoming of death and darkness in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. Martin, can I tell you something that this year uh, we now have three families. So it's our Immaculate Conception, Our yes. Lady of Grace, and St. Joseph's, and we're going to be doing our, 
our Easter week, our Easter uh, tritium t together. So this is a first oh, for us. So, this is a first where yes. there's going to be a combination of yes. the three parishes. Yep. And uh, so it's all the more exciting for us. To, wow, to, that's wonderful. And wonderful. Our, our fire starts on the morning of Saturday, the vigil, mm -hmm. and it burns all day into the darkness. <laughs> so we're, we get really, really ready for it. Oh, so. wow. Wow. So let's um, come through here. Okay. Oh, there's some light, I think. Oh, yes. And so now we, Hi, come, <laughs> we come into the light. So where we are here is in the um, candle making area of Markland Candle. Uh, briefly, I started the company uh, 35 years ago in my parents' basement in St. Louis. Wow. And um, <clears throat> after I was married with my wife, Christine, in 1991, we have been working with our children on this company for the last... What brought you to New Hampshire? It's a long story, okay. but I did a fellowship in Europe. And I came back to the States, ended up in New Hampshire, and moved oh. from St. Louis to New Hampshire. Wow. So here, along with my wife and our four children, we fashion and decorate candles for churches around the world. Wow. And we've been fortunate for three popes to make no candles kidding. for John Paul, the Pope, St. John Paul II, oh, wow. Pope Benedict when he came to the United States, and uh -huh. most recently, Pope Francis. So um, oh. we're, it's a great distinction to have that oh, I guess as so. an honor. Oh, wow. And so, we're also honored to have it in our church. <laughs> so what you have here is a representation of different styles of the Paschal candle. So what we talked about is we gather as a Christian community on the evening of the uh, Easter at the vigil outside around a fire. And we bless that fire. And from that fire, we light a candle. And that candle stands as the primary symbol of the light of Christ and Christ's resurrection, life over death. That's right. We sing Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Yes, yeah. we do. And um, what's interesting, why a candle? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, a candle itself is uh, a sign of sacrifice. When you think of it, a candle is consumed uh -huh. so that there might be light. And it gives of itself for the light. Right. Hence the analogy that Jesus gave of himself, that we might have light and life. Beautiful. So the very fact of a candle, as it burns down over the course of the year, should be a reminder to every Christian and every Catholic that sees that, that that is a sacrificial symbol. Right. That the wax, the candle, gives of itself that might be light. Right. The sacrificial lamb, Jesus. Absolutely, nice. absolutely. Mm -hmm. The other thing to remember mm -hmm. is, you know, the references to be children of the light are resplendent through the Bible. You know, we, St. Paul says we should be children of the day, not of the night. Right. Jesus says we should put our lights on the mountaintop, not under the bushel basket. Right. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. So the light, the imagery of light is very strong as part of our, our, our theological heritage, if we one might say. Right. Then the question becomes, why the ornamentation? Well, the rite calls for the priest to mark onto that candle certain elements, a cross, an alpha and omega, and a Beginning date. and the end. The Alpha and the Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Right. It's the A and Z in the Greek alphabet. Uh -huh. And really, the priest will trace Christ, the beginning, traces the Alpha, and the end of all times. Through him and his glorious wounds, he puts five wax nails are embedded with incense into the candle to mark the five wounds of Christ. Uh -huh. All times and all seasons belong to him, and you trace the date. Right. 2021 this mm -hmm. year onto the candle. Right. Now, the rite doesn't require those elements to be on the candle, mainly that the, the priest trace his finger on it. However, mm -hmm. convention has it that we want those symbols on the candle to stand afterwards. Right. Hence, you will see here this design has an alpha and an omega, mm -hmm. the cross, ah. the date. Yeah. And then the wax nails would go into that. Just one second. So we would, we fashion these that are made by hand. And then the priest would put those into the candle like that. And again, these five wax nails um, represent the five wounds of Christ. The, the piercing of his two hands, his two feet and his side. Then the deacon will carry this 
into the darkened church, lifting yeah. it three times along the way to the front, mm -hmm. singing Christ our light. Right. And then around the amble, the deacon will then proclaim the great Easter proclamation, right. the, the exalted. exalted. Yes. It goes back to the fourth century. Oh. And what's really interesting, mm -hmm. what's a really big thing for us candlemaker and beekeepers, see I'm a beekeeper as well, is that with the third edition of the Roman Missal, Missal which Pope Benedict inter, um, commissioned, the bees are back in the exalted. Oh, There's that whole out. section at the end of the exalted mm -hmm. that was taken out in the second edition oh. and was put back in the English version. And it says, On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this evening candle, the solemn pillar, the work of bees and your servants' hands, uh -huh. an evening sacrifice of praise. And it calls out that this candle is the work of bees and your servants' hands. Your servants' hands. And, and we here wow. hand make these candles. Mm -hmm. They're hand molded, they're hand dipped, and every one of the decorations is hand carved. The wax is removed and wax is poured into it. So what's really powerful for us as candle decorators on that night to think that in thousands of churches around the country, the works of our hands will be lit as a primary symbol for the light of Christ wow. and the resurrection. Wow. This is one of the, this here is your candle this year. Oh, this is a memory of, of Robert. This is great. And um, this is our new design. It's called Nox Beata. Because in the Exalted, we, it's often several references, this blessed night. And we recount on this night when God let the Israelites dry shot through the Red Sea. Uh -huh. On this night when the Paschal Lamb was uh, slaughtered that we might have light. And there's several references to this blessed night. Oh. So the Latin for that, which is Nox Beata, is the, is the um, genesis for this design here. And it features a, an artistic splattered motif here of um, silver, bronze, or gold wax splattered on it. And um, rosettes would go in here to mark the five wounds. I care, like these. They would, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the other thing is, the other candle that you have for one of your parishes. Right, it's St. Peter's in Saratoga. Correct. Yep. And that one, let me just grab one here. Um, <clears throat> this is a design called Apis Mater, that reference to the bee of which I spoke. Uh -huh. You know, the work of the bees in your servant hands. It also goes on to say in the Exalted, now we know the precious gift of this wax, which Mother Bee gives to us, a light divided yet undimmed, for it is fed by melted wax given by Mother Bee to build a torch so glorious. Now, so there's a big reference to bees in this, mm -hmm. and the question is why beeswax? Well, when you think of it, there's, um, in, in a hive, there's three classes of bees. There's the queen, there's the workers, her daughters, and there's the drones, her sons. But the only bee that makes wax are her daughters, but her daughters are virgins. And so the analogy there is that, as a reference, some think, to the virgin mother who gives us the sacrifice of her son, Jesus the Christ. Wow, how beautiful that is. So in this design, we actually have large chunks of incense that will go and mark the five wounds for yeah, yeah. The Those are my favorite. We have, I know there's a lot of designs, but that one is so interesting. So these would go into the candle. Now this design is our homage to Apis Mater, which means Mother Bee. And if you can see, it has, this design wraps around the candle circling and circling the candle and the thought is really is to lead your eye up because the liturgical symbol and this is going to sound odd from a candle maker is not the candle the liturgical symbol is the flame right. and the candle is simply there to support the flame wow. and our eyes should always be drawn to the flame to the top of the candle as beautiful as these are, mm -hmm. that's really the liturgical symbol. Brings you to the top right. of the light. Yeah. And wow. then this is another one which we call Jerusalem. This one actually happens to go to the Mission San Juan uh, Capistrano. 
in um, California, oh, and he wow. had, they have a basilica, so they have their coat of arms oh, on wow. the back. Oh. Um, this is that same design, yet in a different motif. Beautiful. This is a beautiful one. It's called Genesis, and it has the creation story here. It has the Paschal moon because Easter is always the first Sunday after the first full moon mm -hmm. after the vernal equinox. Wow. So part of it is when we stand outside around that fire, we can look up and see the Paschal moon. So this is a Paschal moon. It's the parting of the Red Seas. It's order out of chaos. Is the spirit hovering over the waters. So wow. that's the creation <clears throat> concept there. This here is what we call Dufal. This one here is Armagh, which is the Celtic cross. Uh, this is a brand new uh, custom design for a church in Chicago. And um, they wanted the concept of mercy. So there's a stylized cross here and um, the date in Roman numerals. So this is 2021. And the design wraps around the candle, leading the eye upward. Wow. This one goes to a Native American reservation in South Dakota. And these colors are very representative and special to that indigenous community. Um, so that's just a, a smattering. And, and it's how the Paschal candle can be adapted to represent the local worshiping community. Wow. And how it can be... Um, uh, incorporated mm -hmm. and that it's not just this one size of it and you see obviously there's multiple sizes right because right. the um, the the church there's large churches and there's small churches and mm -hmm. so what we do here is we offer a multitude of designs each which can be customized in color in a multitude of sizes yeah. And um, and we have to have them all there for Easter, right. which means we're very busy these times. I bet you are. <laughs> we are. Right. Does it take the whole year to make? We all do. These we actually stuff? start as soon as Easter is over. Uh -huh. uh, we have a saying for Easter Monday, which is Christ is risen, we are dead, and then we <laughs> take a few weeks off, and then beginning in May, we uh -huh. will actually start making candles for uh -huh. next Easter. Now I understand you have your own bees here as well. Right? You we take do. Care of your we bees do. Stuff. We have um, bees on the property, and everyone thinks I have bees for my bees beeswax candles. But those who know bee beekeeping or have bees realize that out of a hive, which has fifty, sixty thousand bees, and you can get hundreds of pounds of honey, you only get a pound of wax. Oh. So nice. these candles are fifty-one percent beeswax. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we buy twenty to thirty thousand pounds of beeswax a year, so from my hundred some highs, I hardly get enough wax to make one candle. Oh, I so we buy that. our wax <clears throat> from around the world, mm -hmm. and we need twenty to thirty thousand pounds of beeswax. How many bees do you need to make that? Well, if you stack them up, you'd need one point five billion bees, not million. If you stack up the bees, head to stinger, you go three quarters away around the world. That's how many Mark B's Mark Clint Candle requires just for the wax that you see here. Oh, wow. So from this little creature, which mm -hmm. on whom we've depended so much for our um, pollination, you know, our honey, our wax, which is really vital to our livelihood because without the bees for pollination, a third of our fruits and vegetables we wouldn't have. That's right, yeah. So she's, she's a very special creature. And I, oh. I would dare say... There's no other creature whose virtues are extolled in a liturgical text. When you think about it, mm -hmm. in the Exalted, we praise the virtues of Mother Bee, which gives us this torch. We don't praise the hippos and the alligators. I mean, we talk about them in biblical stories. Sure. Yeah. But it's, I think it's, it's one of the, the few creatures whose virtues we extort. And I'll just finally... It's so small, yet it is. so important. But oh. St. John Chrysostom said in one of his homilies, the bee is most beloved of God's creatures, not because she labors, but she labors for others. Oh. And everything about a bee is not selfless, but mm. is self, it, it's not selfish, it's selfless. Like Jesus, and like Jesus calls us to Correct. be. Correct. People who give so of ourselves. The, the bee lives in a community. Uh -huh. It's a social community. It doesn't live on its own. Mm -hmm. And everything that a bee does is for the sake of the community. Wow. So there's a real strong analogy Beautiful. in terms of the theology of light, mm -hmm. why candles. And, and, you know, there's also a phrase in the Exalted that says, a light divided yet undimmed. 
Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that from that one Paschal candle that goes into a darkened church, we light everyone's candles, and then the church is bathed in the light of those candles. Mm -hmm. But that Paschal candle doesn't lo lose any of its luminosity. Right. It's just as bright mm -hmm. before we separated the light than afterwards. And that's the story behind, behind a light divided yet undimmed, that we can divide that light to a multitude of other lights, right. but it doesn't lose any of its luminosity. And hence, we can share the light of Christ with an infinite number of people, and we don't give up any of that light wow. ourselves. Very beautiful image. Yeah. So that's, you know, so my, my, my hope would be that the, the, your good parishioners wouldn't look at a Paschal candle the same way again. No, they won't. And that when they know. look at it, besides the artistry and mm -hmm. the hand doneness and the beauty, what we feel is, is probably some of the most beautiful candles that there are. Certainly. But beyond that, that this candle, what it stands for. Right. And the bee that was critical in making that candle as a symbol for how we should live our lives, mm -hmm. that we should be living for the others, right. that we should be uh, evangelists and, and messengers. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh -huh. know? you know, I often, when we have our baptisms uh, by the front of the door of the church, we always have our candle there, and I always ex explain that candle to those who are being baptized in their families. And most people don't know that, that the history and what it means, you know. So it's important that, that I think our church is so big, too. Sure. So we have that big candle. And sometimes it's hard to move, but it's worth it, you know. You know, we need strong, big, beautiful symbols. Yes. You know, that's our rights call for that. I agree. If anything, yeah. we should have an abundance of water. We should have big candles. All of our liturgical symbols should be strong and efficacious, and they should remind us of the salvation, the saving works of our God. Of Jesus, yeah. And um, so I, I am, uh, you know, honored and humbled that you would grace us today oh, and delighted. allow us to share yeah. a little bit about what we do. Yeah. We take, may, may I ask, what's the biggest candle you've ever made? We do. Uh, I should have brought it out from before. We make a five-inch diameter, 62, uh, 72 inches tall. Wow. It's roughly over 60 pounds. Wow. Uh, we believe it's the biggest one made in the United States. We make about a dozen of them a year. Or like cathedrals? The and, cathedral in Los yeah. Angeles gets one. Oh, right. So we yeah. make the candle there. Uh, there's other cathedrals. There are actually some parishes, very large parishes, um, that will get it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a magnificent candle. Um, and it takes about 1.5 million bees working wow. as a labor of love to make enough wax for that candle. Uh, plus all the worker bees here making That's the right. Candles. Now, where's the furthest that you've shipped in, in Guam, the on the island of Guam. Oh, Guam. What's interesting is the island of Guam is about 14 hours ahead of us. So Holy Saturday morning, while we are just running around <laughs> getting ready for the Easter Vigil, mm -hmm. the first Martin candle is being lit wow. on the island of Guam. Wow. And uh, I have a custom that I've been doing for a number of years, which is... Um, Wherever I am, I find when that first candle is being lit. And if I'm in the, in, in the East Coast, it's like 3 or 4 in the morning. If it's on the West Coast, it's like 1 or 2 in the morning, you know. Yeah. And I open the sacramentary and I, re I can't sing. So I recite mm -hmm. the exalted. Uh -huh. To be in communion with those people on the island of Guam as oh. the first Markland candle is lit. Oh, that's great. And then throughout oh. the next 24 hours, I will pause because sometimes we'll make candles in the Middle East or Europe and then the East Coast and the Midwest, the West Coast and then Hawaii. So then it all goes back to whole, the Easter Sunday morning, oh. early in the morning, mm -hmm. which is when our brothers and sisters on the island of Hawaii are lighting their candles. Wow. So there's 24 hours there. Yeah. And I pause and pray and think how the works of our hands and the gifts of the bees uh, on this most special night this Nox Beata, this yeah. blessed night, and to try to be in communion with the church as we celebrate the greatest of all wow. Catholic feasts, the Feast of the Resurrection. Wow, how beautiful. Great symbolism for us and, yeah. and, and great talent. So thank you so much. Yeah. The, the only other thing yeah. I would share is, you know, there's a lot of talk about environmentalism and, and um, uh, you know, uh, 
Laudato Si, Pope Francis' encyclical. Yes, yes you we know, spoke about that a few times. Laudato Si, and, and I think your, your viewers may not know, you know, the honeybee, and it's been getting a lot of publicity because it's so vital for our agricultural system. Yes. You know, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to survive the American agricultural system if we didn't have the honeybee to pollinate our crops, our fruits, our vegetables, you know. And, um, you know, not to mention the honey and the wax that she gives us. Um, and she's in great peril. It's very hard. You know, you hear about the colony collapse disorder and that it's really hard to keep bees. Yeah. But what's interesting is the honeybee is not native to North America. She came over in the 1660s and, uh, and with the pilgrims. And oh. she's here, but it's on her wings that we feed our peoples. So really, and and she's a migrant too because we move her around mm -hmm. the country to pollinate the crops, oh. and um, it's something to keep as we think about immigration That's and right. justice and yeah. migration, yeah. because um, we don't do it for her benefit. We do it so that we can have the perfect peach at the right price yeah. in close proximity. Yeah. So there's a lot there. There's there a lot. To, there's a lot to unpack in terms yeah. of social justice, and to, in terms of. Uh, ecology and um, selfless and living in community so yeah beautiful so this has been really really a treat <laughs> and great for us and uh we weren't sure what we were going to happen what was going to happen today but this, this is really great and to and to even to recognize that in our church we've had many of these symbols over the years and for us this year this new one in memory of our brother robert mm -hmm. uh will we'll be there burning beautifully so so we will pack this up and you will take it back to, yes. the, to the good people to in Schenectady? People, yeah, it'll be the first time, I think, that they'll, they'll actually see where their candle came from. Right. So, and it's not just a generic candle. It's made with work of human hands <laughs> and great love and devotion. So well, we will you. join you on that night as you sing the exalted and light your candle okay. into the honor and glory of God that we might join you in that prayer. All right. Martin, thank you very much. Father yeah, Jerry and all here. the people in your parish. Um, thank you so much for allowing us and for coming and visiting us virtually here. If you're ever in Kentuckook, uh come on by. We have a wonderful gift shop that will tempt you. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, but thank you, and God be with you. Thank you, Martin. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, give us a thumbs up, and uh, hope we see you real soon. Okay, so God bless. Take care. Remember, wear your mask. Keep your distance. And be good to each other. And remember mostly that I love you dearly. Okay, so we'll see you again. Marty, thank you. Thank you, Father Jerry.